What is the purpose of gatekeeping that feeling of transnational mobility to people who feel like they can identify? The first thing to always ask is, well, where are you from? It's a, just a natural question that comes out. Maybe for us, because we've had sort of these transient lifestyles, it's not as significant kind of as where we are now and why we are where we are now. Was it okay for you in the beginning? I mean, of course, you got used to it, but... When people are asking where you're from, maybe it's because they're asking, why do you look a certain way? And if you look like you come from somewhere else, they might try to put a certain stereotype on you. Or they might just be genuinely curious, like, why do you look a little bit Asian or a little bit Indian or a little bit something else, right? So what they're really asking is, why do you look the way you do? Or why do you have the accent that you do? <laughs> or for what purpose are you in this country as opposed to wherever you came from? I always feel quite defensive when people ask me where I'm from. I find it quite hard to answer. I feel like it makes me put all of my barriers up and then it takes a while to undo those. Even though I know it's such a natural question, everyone asks it and it's such an easy, like, people don't think anything of it when they ask it. But for me, it's quite an emotional thing to answer. I feel like I just pick a place depending on what I think they expect or what I want them to think of me as. So it depends on what country I'm traveling in, for example. Do you associate your identity with where you're from or your home? Or do you try and keep that separate? I definitely separate them. I feel like my identity will kind of determine where I make my home. And for me right now, because I'm not super settled, home for me is kind of a something for the future. And there's no real place to go back to or no place I think this is where I'm from and this is how the world sees me, right? So, um, I mean, where my parents live, that's just where my parents live. And where my siblings live, that's just where my siblings live. And where I spent my childhood, that's just where I grew up at that time. Yeah, just where I was at the time. And, and when I find the place that matches my identity or matches my personality, then that will be home. I feel like I have many homes. So it won't be just one home, but I feel home when I go, like every time I go back, I feel home somehow. All my homes make who I am. So basically, yeah, it's somehow it, it is related. Like all the homes are what made me today. Home is just kind of almost just like dirty word to me because it's not there. It's not here. It's like it, the feeling's not there anymore. So I should give up on this concept. Places change just like people and they change at a slower rate, but they still change. And if you're not there to be there, you'll miss them. It, it's hard to come to grips with sometimes. I almost feel like it's this feeling of groundedness and like satisfaction that I no longer associate with any place. And so to me, it feels disingenuous to call any place a home for me because it implies emotional attachment. And what I'm really emotionally attached to is the people that I have with me in any particular place. And I know that if the people, my friends dispersed, I would resent the place for what it no longer is for me. My identity is more created in the in-between. But at any one moment, my home is wherever I'm at. This is my home. And it's my home until I move somewhere else. Wherever I'm sleeping at night, that's my home. I have generations of memories and things so that will always be my home place. We'll, we'll see uh, how that changes. We've never had a house there or anything like that, though. So every time I was there, I lived in a different place. What if identity is more about our ability to adapt and to thrive wherever we are more than it is about where we are or where we're from? Like, I identify as being a person who is adaptive. <laughs> I also identify someone who's really adaptive. And I think it comes at the cost of my knowing what I truly want. Because I don't think there's so much of an I. There's more of a blending. There's the I who is expected by the people around me. Maybe home is wherever I can be myself. I can function here. I can be independent. I'm financially stable. I have the hobbies I like to do. I have the friends like really pour my heart out to. And yeah, that for me couldn't happen if I don't feel accepted by the people around me, right? So I guess it depends on how you define home or what you're looking for when you hear the word home. You're bringing up an interesting sort of external quality, which is more of our control, which is acceptance. 
want mm-hmm. to identify a home, even though you made it into that mold, is sort of a rejection from that surrounding community. I, I think that's an important thing sort of as a global community to kind of have that understanding and understanding why that takes place. But just also that's that can be an experience in terms of people who travel, being rejected by a place that you finally sort of start calling home or identifying with. How much of home is our own making and how much of it is how much we are made to feel at home and like we belong somewhere from external factors? That lack of being kind of embraced by that community that you want to call home. I can never find that. I've realized that having that kind of experience has allowed me to be more open-minded and not just see this idea of being from somewhere. It's it's no longer rigid in the way that, you know, we're all brought up to think that it is. It's it's entirely of your own making. I think I've always gravitated towards other internationals. Um, so I've actually kind of in that way filtered out the possibility of being rejected because I've never aimed to be accepted. I move around and I don't see myself settling down. I think that would drive me crazy. And basically, I have commitment issues to geographic region. Surrounding myself with internationals, it's guaranteed that it's either I leave or they leave. When you're a foreigner or when you don't look like an in-group member, you're kind of allowed or you're expected to be exotic in some way because you're different. The more exotic you are, the more fascinating you become. But when you kind of fit into people's like schema of like what the person should be, then they kind of have like, here are the expectations and like, here you go. I got very used to striving and finding a lot of sense of accomplishment in learning the language, learning the system, becoming competent in this new place. A lot of my identity was tied to fitting in, striving to fit in. And then once I didn't have to do that anymore, I was like, okay, (laughs) what else do I do? (laughs) Every day is not a constant struggle of figuring stuff out. Well, I have this thing, like, once I learn everything, like language and how the culture and everything, I get bored and try to look for another place to go to. But I'm, I'm really tired of moving, actually. But it's just like I get bored and I have to look for something new and new culture, new things to do. And to be honest, I hate myself for making another adventure like that. But it just... I want to settle, but I can't. It is such a human thing to want to move. We're just designed that way biologically, and I think also intellectually. So I think it's a wonderful thing. And I completely relate to wanting to just settle, because it does get tiring to move, picking up, just the act of moving, meeting new people, learning a new culture, whatever it is, is a pain in the ass, but it is so worth it because it's stimulating intellectually, it's stimulating socially. And again, I I think it's very human. I think I carry my home all all the way with me, all the time with me. Home is my body, just myself. Home is with my parents because we'll say something simple and I'll have three languages in it. And like no one else would understand, this just no one else would understand this kind of sentences. Your identity is created with an in between. It's like this in between all these different languages, but only a certain people can understand and bounce off. I felt most at home in an airport, in True. like that kind yeah. of liminal space, and where you're not quite here, not quite there. I think home is. It's so hard for me to define now, and I feel like I would call it either connections with people or airports or a feeling of relaxation and satisfaction. But I think when I think about the feeling of home, I can feel physical anxiety, like I need to run. So I think I feel most comfortable when I'm on the move, on my feet, excited. It is natural to want to keep experiencing new things, keep challenging ourselves to learn new culture and languages because that's become, you know, so familiar. It's become almost part of our identity. But I would argue that it is part of human nature also to form like lifelong connections and lifelong memories to a certain place. So it's difficult like navigating those two things and just trying to be honest with yourself. How much of this is just habit and how much is this what I really want? Oftentimes when people are forced to choose 
between what's familiar and what will make them happy, they choose what's familiar. I would want to have a place that I could come back to. I just got married recently and it was neat to have the sense of this relationship being home and and knowing that, or assuming, we'll see if it happens, that, that when we live in other countries, then we'll travel together. So I'll have someone else who will be home with me and wherever we happen to live. Sense of consistency, right? Seconding relationships as home. My boyfriend was the reason I was comfortable with calling the place we both lived in at the time home. Acceptance, but also the relationships, right? You could fit into a certain society, but if you're not building relationships with people in that society, that would be something that I would feel a deficiency with. And I do feel that deficiency, the relationship piece. Like I love the moving I do want to settle. The thing that's been hardest is just that relationship piece. But also when you build a relationship with someone, it usually requires anchoring yourself to a point. It is more comfortable to do what's familiar. It's hard to find the people who keep wanting to be nomads with you, and especially when you have kids and you think about, you know, their psychological need of creating attachment to things and people and, and certain consistencies can get complicated. Kids who move from one place to another often also feel like where you're neither here nor there, where you can never be fully anywhere again. And I feel like that's also very common, having to find that like in between or like the meta space. I think it's finding the consistence that come with you throughout the whole journey, isn't it? Yeah, it's just something that that symbolizes like my history, my past, the things that I've lived. And this is why, if you're interested, why we do it like this. And that's how I felt home. That's how I attach home to.